Now you and I are both public speakers, go out and make an audience learn from the stage. How important would you say being able to become a public speaker is for anybody's success, especially when they want to become an author as well? Well, if you want to become an author, it's critical. In today's world, you can't just write a book and throw it out there. It's very rare. Maybe 50 years ago you could do that, word of mouth would happen. There are now, just in the United States, 600,000 books a year published. Everybody has a computer. Everybody can self-publish. There's a million, you know, what they call vanity presses. You can, you know, self-publish yourself. You can put on ebook as a or e Amazon as an ebook. So every psychologist who has two hours in a day when they don't have a patient is writing a book. Every coach is writing a book. You know, so there's lots of books out there. A book, if it's good, doesn't necessarily mean it'll sell. What sells a book is someone selling the book. It's you giving a talk, it's you on an interview, it's you on a webinar, on a seminar, on a teleseminar. And so you've got to go out there and, and basically sell the message just enough so that people go, I want more. And so now they're going to buy your book. Learn internet marketing. Internet marketing is critical. You know, you can sell a lot of books on the internet. We sell probably 60 or 80 countries that never would have got sold before will buy books, will come to seminars, listen to my webinars, listen to me online, that never would have done that before. But speaking, whether it's on the internet or whether it's in front of a group, is critical. As I was saying to the group tonight that I was doing a speech to, if you can only talk one-on-one -on -one with people, I can only make one sale in an hour, perhaps. But if I can talk to 500 people, I might be able to sell 250 of those people the same product. It's much more leverageable if you can be a speaker. So here we are, we've seen Jack Canfield, um, and that's just a part of the interview that I did with Jack Canfield. Uh, I'd like to show you now a couple of things that you need to be considering if you are looking at launching your own TV show. You don't have to be a talk show host, but ultimately talking is part of the deal. And you can have a set like these, you, you can buy these sets, you can make these sets, or you can get a green screen and make it so the set looks incredible and incredibly real. Think about the stuff you see on CNN and Fox and all these other shows, BBC. These aren't usually people with the people. Like for instance, when you see a guy in front of a newsroom, he's not usually in front of a newsroom. What usually is actually happening is he's in front of a green screen and behind him is superimposed a newsroom. Because those guys don't come around and hand him something, they're just busy in the background, but that's the kind of way that they put it together. And it's fascinating, and because you haven't noticed, it means it works. And more and more people are doing this on a daily basis, so that's a great way to start it, making it look like a big show with very little actual production value involved in it. All right, so first of all, what you've got to do is build your brand and your reputation. It's kind of chicken and egg. You start talking about who you are, and people will start saying, wow, that's amazing, and I love what you do, and I want to see more of what you do. And they start creating that relationship with them. But work it out. I mean, I talk about branding all the time, and this is really about creating that personal brand. Who are you? What? Do you represent? What do people think of you? What do you want people to think of you? And how can you grow your reputation so people are proud to be connected to you? These are the elements that you should be considering when putting together your own show or putting together the personality that you exist as as you start broadcasting into your own show. Then number two, create the show. But as you create a show, think about a couple of elements. Which market are you going to service? Who are you going to bring it out to? What kind of format? What style? And of course, you've got to think about this. What kind of platform do you want to broadcast onto? Are you going to put it onto Facebook? Are you going to go to Instagram? Are you going to put it onto LinkedIn? Is it just going to be a YouTube show? Is it going to be live? Is it going to be recorded? Is it going to be five minutes long? Is it going to be a 30 second thing? Now, the thing is about using social media is most social media responds best for big numbers the shorter the clip. I know that when I'm doing a 90 minute show, if people haven't caught it live, or a 60 second, 60 minute show, if people haven't caught it live, they probably won't have time at work to invest in not doing anything else but watching this show. But that's not necessarily my target audience. My target audience might be to produce the content, make a podcast out of it, and then later on chop the bits up to make little viral videos. So for instance, when I talk about how to make your show, this section here, that could be a section on its own. The bit of Jack Canfield, that could be a section on its own. The bit when I used to be a Chippendale, that's a section on its own. They can be repurposed and used later on. So it's an investment in creating the content that I can revisit at a later stage. You don't necessarily have to burn it all in one. And as for platforms, I put it across all the platforms. Number three, create a, a vehicle 
that will interest influential people to want to appear on it. So if you're creating a show, you want to make sure that the show is fascinating and interesting, that people of note and influence will say, yeah, I'd like to be on that show. I know for a fact when I turn around to people and say, look, I'm doing a show that goes on Instagram, sorry, it goes on to uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, uh, Periscope and Twitter simultaneously and Twitch as well, by the way, if you're a fan of Twitch, you'll see us on there. And it reaches a thousand people to two thousand people every single day. But then we also do replays and so on. At this stage, this is something that many people turn around to and say, you know what, that's not bad. Right now I'm reaching nobody. And if you say it's going to grow and it's going to get bigger. Now, the thing is, if you're starting on this whole journey, you'll start off with rubbish numbers, but that's not the point. Don't think about it, about the vanity metrics. If you just put a picture of something that's really rude or something that's shocking or offensive, you'll get loads and loads of people paying attention to it, but it won't lead back to you and you won't be able to monetize it. This is about creating a TV show in a genre where there are no web TV shows or very few live ones going out there. Am I doing it differently to everybody else? Yes, I am. Am I doing it strange and that I'm not like anybody else? Well, yeah, I'm kind of on my own. I know a handful of people that are doing the same kind of thing, but that will change. Remember, podcasts didn't used to have anybody doing them. Now there's millions, maybe even a billion, no, no, not a billion, but certainly um, tens of millions of people creating their podcasts. So you are just a pioneer. Don't be scared, just go for it. Number four, get sponsors, create a marketing plan and also a timetable. If you really want to turn it into a business, you have to think like this. This is a business. The next thing that I'm going to be wheeling out onto this show is sponsorship. There will be advertising, not necessarily advertising that takes you away from watching and enjoying the show, but I can just say brought to you by, brought to you by some kind of cigar. I won't say cigar, but I won't use those kind of advertisers. It's got to be something that ethically works for me. But it also has to be something that you feel as a viewer really works for you as well. If I could turn around and say, you know, I've got a business community that I reach with these shows and I share with them really great ways of marketing. So there's entrepreneurs, there's people in, mar- in advertising, sales and so on and education who watch this. People who are speakers, people who are producing content, uh, lots of media people. Somebody is going to say, that's my target audience, but I don't want to create a TV show. I haven't got the resources or the time or the inclination or I'm too shy. So what I'll do is I'll piggyback off your show. How much do you want? And that's how you build it. Okay, number five, spread the word to influencers, managers, agencies, and platforms. Let everybody know that you exist. All these different types of organizations will want to know how they can do business with you if you get to a high level. Some will, some won't. It's basically, it's it's a suck it and see exercise. Contact a ton of people. Most will say no, but one will say yes. If your mindset is all about the fact that you recognize that if you ask 100 people and one says yes and everyone says no, that's a yes, then you will love the opportunities of doing this now. Think about how many people got marketing budgets that they're not using because there's no point doing any advertising because people aren't out. If they're not going to put stuff on billboards because people aren't driving around, they're still in lockdown, they want something that will reach people. Otherwise, in many cases, the marketing team will lose that budget because the procurement department or the the accounting department will turn around and say right you can't have it next year because you didn't spend it this year they're looking for something to spend it on so work out who the potential sponsors are make a vehicle make a battle plan for them to spend money with you and they will love it and they will do it all right number six get some impressive interviews done and they don't have to be superstars it's true. I mean, we're talking about a global market now. And the thing about a global market, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to know everybody that you see. How many times have you watched a TV show or you've seen an interview with somebody who's fascinating, but you had no idea who they were or what they'd done until they did that thing? For many actors, if you're not a first name basis with your, your fans who love you like Justin Bieber or anybody else, not an actor necessarily, but you know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter. When you see a great movie, You look at it, you say, that's a great movie. Maybe an initial star on the headline was the one that brought you in, but the rest of the actors you might not recognize at all, but you will after that. So don't worry about the fact that people don't know you or don't know your name. They will do if you're doing it consistently. And this is the key. As often as you can, get it out there. Number seven, uh, share it everywhere and raise the bar all the time. Two factors you should think about. Less is more and bigger 
is better. Now, they seem to be two things that are in conflict to each other, but not really. Less is more means simply that if you can do something that's simple and short and sweet and leave people wanting more because you didn't overstay your welcome, then you'll have more people wanting to come to you next time. And bigger is generally better because if you can make it big and you can share with people how big it can be, people can then feel inspired to do more with it and they'll have more bragging rights to tell other people to come and watch your show as well. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Number eight, there are six audiences to consider and I'll move my head slightly to show you exactly what I'm talking about with this. When you're doing a talk show, there's six audiences. Let me explain this for you. There's you to you in your own head. What am I doing with this show? There's you to your guest. You've got to get the right format to keep them happy. There's you to your audience if you're doing it in a studio. So you are speaking in your own head to your guest knowing there's an impact on your audience. There's also the agencies that are watching who are getting the, or guest in. They're also looking at marketing the show. They need to make sure it's all there and running properly. You've got the potential sponsors who want to throw money at the show as well. And then last and not least, I'll be the head here, you can see viewers, the people at home watching the show. So when you're talking, you're not talking to you. You're talking to a number of different people and you do not want to annoy anybody. That's why sometimes doing a show that's got lots of swearing in or has got a real edge to it might not be if you want to get a general audience. General audiences are good, but the problem is in the middle ground, that's where your competition is more than anything. If you do something on the far left or far right or far high or far low, then you're going to get a ton of people who love and swear by it, but it might be a very niche audience. You're looking for a thousand to five thousand who will monetize for you. Now, I know when you're looking at the likes of, you know, YouTube, well, people, some people got millions. Yeah, they have got millions. It doesn't mean that you need millions to be effective. You just need to have people who love your stuff and will buy your stuff, and then you can make a living out of it or make a, a side hustle out of it, which is great as well. In many cases, you're not actually looking to start your business as this. You're looking to cobble it on the side of your business talking about what you love, so you don't have to pay for the Google ads or the Facebook ads or, or whatever kind of billboard advertising it would take to get an audience. They see your show, they love you, they know, like, and trust you, and they want to spend money on you. Why? Because they've seen what you do. You're an expert, and they love that. Okay, number nine is do season strategically. Announcing, leveraging, and growing your audiences. Seasons are when you do them in blocks. I'm still in season one of this show. Now, why is that? Why haven't I stopped it and called a day on season uh, episode 25 or whatever and said no more of a show? Well, very simply because of the fact that I'm, I'm experimenting. I want to see how far this goes until I take a natural break, but I will take a natural break. I wanted to get my learning curve to be as fast and as powerful as it could be. So I've got lots of people saying I'm starting a podcast or I'm starting a TV show, Dave. I'm going to do one a month or one a week. I'm going to start it in the new year. I'm saying why? I started doing a show every day about episode 81 with this show and my learning curve has been super high. If I look back at my earlier shows, most of them were terrible, but they were still terrible when nobody else was doing anything. So they were better than zero. Like the phrase, and I don't mean disrespect with this, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Why? Because nobody else can do anything. Even if you can't see as well as with two eyes, you can still navigate. And that's a key to getting your feet in the water, get your toes wet and start making your show. Does that make sense? Good. Last but not least, hire production and sales marketing teams to upgrade you. There you go, just do move my head a little bit. So you might not be able to do all the things that it takes. It is challenging, it is difficult to make sure you produce all this incredible content, but you might want to elevate it, but you're so busy working your show. So don't worry about that, get somebody to do it for you. Sponsorship will pay, if not, then you pay or do a deal on commission for when the sponsorship does come in, then they are actually working with you. All right, number 11, review, reinvent, add, polish ruthlessly every single show. There are so many elements to this show that I change on a daily basis. Every time I do it, I go back and I change it and I add something else that maybe I haven't seen or hadn't thought about. And that's what I have to work on. And why is it so important? Because if I don't do that, then people can catch up. And also I wanna be producing a really good quality show. I want to show, but by the end of it, you could show on proper TV without them saying, oh, bless, nice effort. No, forget nice effort. Forget, oh, bless. I want this to be the same kind of standard as you can get on proper TV. 
Is it that? Yes. No, it's not. But then again, my objective isn't that. My objective is not to be a late night talk show host. My objective is to talk about the stuff that I want to talk about. Speaking, marketing, positioning yourself, growing your business, growing your industry and being able to get your brand out to people so they spend money with you. That would be a very niche show. That would be like Duck Dynasty if I had a load of production on it. I don't need a load of production. I just need to have me and you and this camera in front of me and a couple of laptops which do all the heavy lifting. So there you go. I'll move my head slightly to one side so you can do this. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll sneeze a little bit as well. But it didn't go on the screen, so that's kind of all right. So there you go. You can take a screenshot of that. If you haven't taken a screenshot, then you have missed it. And you know what? I gave you a chance, but you didn't get your chance and you didn't take it. And that's what life's truly all about. Grab and seize the moment. It's speak on stage.